The earth is covered with many mountainous areas that look like ripples and wrinkles on its surface. These mountain areas cause biodiversity to be distributed unevenly across the planet. In and around the mountains in particular, high levels of biodiversity are concentrated. If we look at the red areas around the earth, these places show us the main centres of high biodiversity on the planet. As it happens in the northern Andes Mountains in South America, in the African Rift Valley, and in the eastern Himalayas, which are fine examples of species-rich areas. But how can we explain these high concentrations of biodiversity? Let us focus on the northern Andes to explore this question. All along the coastline of the Americas, mountains rise high into the sky creating a landscape of many peaks and high elevation plateaus in a topographically rich landscape. In the Andes in South America is a long stretching mountain chain that was shaped by millions of years of uplift. The northern Andes stretches over Venezuela, Colombia and Ecuador and is geographically speaking a young mountain range formed between 10 and three million years ago. Its topography is shaped by parallel running mountains that are divided into three mountain ranges. Nowadays, these mountains reach elevations of almost 5,800 metres and glaciers occupy the highest breaches or ruptures of the Andes. The highest and coldest parts of the northern Andes are home to open grasslands with a high diversity of plants called Paramo. The Paramo is an extraordinary ecosystem because it is an area restricted to the top of the mountains. It is a remarkable, unique and fragile system on our planet. The Paramo has a great biological diversity of endemic species with a limited distribution. It has the richest, high mountain flora in the world. The Paramo is dominated by grasslands and large woody plants in the form of rosettes, evergreens, woody and flexible shrubs and cushion-shaped plants. The Paramo includes almost 4,000 different species of vascular plants including 22 families of ferns, 100 families of flowering plants or angiosperms, and one family without flowers or gymnosperms. The genera with a remarkably high biodiversity are Lupinus, Hypericum, Barsia, and Pudia, among many others. The most striking diversity is in the group of Espalacias, also called Frelojones. These are only found in the high mountains of Venezuela, Colombia and Ecuador. The Espalacias are easily recognisable as woody stem rosettes that vary from individuals at knee height to giants of six metres tall. At present, the Paramos form a refuge of unique species which are only found in this part of the planet due to the result of an exceptional history of ecological diversification. At present day, Paramos are like islands in the highest parts of the Andes, forming an archipelago shaped by numerous peaks, plateaus and high mountain passes. The topography of each mountain is area specific and can be seen as a fingerprint with a unique identifier. For example, the geologically ancient mountains 
like the tabletop mountains of Venezuela, have been eroded and lost much of their topography. This is expressed as a unique mountain fingerprint. This fingerprint is essentially different from the geologically young mountains that still retain much of their rough original topography, such as the Andean mountains. Hence the fingerprint of the mountain is the stage on which the theatre of climate change of the Pleistocene and the drivers of evolution acted. Scientists have discovered that during the last two million years, cold and warm periods of climate caused the Paramo to migrate upwards and downwards hundreds of times, especially during the last million years. These changes could even have been so much as 1,500 vertical metres. When climate was warming, the Paramos moved upwards and its distribution broke into isolated fragments. But when climate cooled, the Paramo moved downslope and the topography of the mountain offered much more space for connections. Interestingly, these cold and warm conditions were distributed unevenly in time. These scientists discovered that during the last two million years, the period of the Pleistocene Ice Ages, warm global temperatures like today, only took about 20% of the time, while cold and cool conditions dominated for over 80% of the time. As a result, the Paramos were often much larger than what we see in the present, and the populations of plants were much more connected. This long dance of connectivity and disconnection is an important mechanism which we call the flickering connectivity system. But thanks to the differences in the topography of the Andes, each paramo was connected and disconnected in a spatially and temporarily unique and different way. In the case of the Purase, in the Colombian Andes, the current area of the paramo is only 5% of what it was 20,000 years ago. As you can see, during cold periods, the Paramos connected along lower elevations, becoming the most dominant ecosystem of the Andean mountains. However, the process of connectivity between Paramos varied dramatically, because if we compare mountains at different times, the connection and disconnection occurred at different elevations, depending on how far the Paramo extended and the presence or absence of plateaus. But what happened at the level of species? One of the consequences of the changing connectivity is that the populations of species became isolated and intermixed numerous times. This connection and disconnection of species populations is an important mechanism for speciation and generates new branches in the tree of evolution. Phylogenetic studies investigating these trees of evolution have shown that the Paramo hosts many lineages of plants that diversified rapidly. These diversifications, or radiations, in the evolutionary tree occurred especially in the last two million years, and it is believed that these flickering climatic conditions played a key role in these diversifications. As a result, the Paramo has been called the world's fastest evolving and coolest biodiversity hotspot in the world. Then the Paramo has been dancing up and down the mountains, while the set of genetic features or better known as genetic pools of Paramo species, are repeatedly fragmented and connected in the flickering connectivity system. This is how, during periods of isolation, different species appear in different regions. The repeated fusion and disconnection of populations is the mechanism of speciation that is represented in the branches of evolutionary trees of diversity. Today we have the privilege to witness the existence of Paramos. They are ancestral sacred places for the Aboriginal humans, giving a peaceful sense of being part of the long history of nature and the planet. 
but also because they act as sponges, absorbing moisture from rain and fog for subsequent use by plants, animals and humans. The paramos are like large towers of water, which maintain life in the Andean mountains and earth as water is the vital element that sustains life on this planet. Furthermore, the Paramo is an essential ecosystem for the survival of people that depend to a large extent on the facilities and goods that it has to offer, such as production of food, medicines, spices, building materials and firewood. But also numerous cities of Venezuela Colombia and Ecuador are supplied by the Paramo's water. However, major threats are currently affecting this rich ecosystem. Large mining multinational companies have discovered substantial amounts of minerals where Paramos reside. And this economic sector is rapidly expanding and now threatens the Paramo's ecosystem. Their unique species and the livelihoods of local communities. Nevertheless, communities from the Andean regions are now fighting back to protect their ancestral territories and stop the expansion of mining to safeguard their livelihoods for present and future generations. But will we be on time to protect this unique Andean ecosystem? We have the responsibility to conserve and restore this highly diverse ecosystem and avoid losing more than two million years of evolution within a few decades of human intervention.